Hey there friends, Doug with DNA in the Garage. Real quick, this is gonna be a totally normal video. What you're looking at right here is my Hero GoPro 8, the one I've been recording with for several years. It decided to die a slow death yesterday and it took the audio for this video with it. Shame, I know, waste not though. Did a voiceover for y'all, so it's not a totally normal format, but it will be a totally normal d &E video. We're gonna give you some great info on how to rebuild brake calipers, specifically for this here Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ pretty much any vehicle. It's all the same. Enjoy the video. Alrighty, friends, like I said, we're gonna be using the Friend Kit kit to rebuild some calipers, some factory calipers. These kits are great. They give you everything you need, the piston, all the rubber, the slide hardware. They even give you the lubricants you're gonna need. Real quick, why would we bother rebuilding calipers? You can get power stops on Amazon, on Rock Auto, uh, all kinds of Chinese dual bleeder options that are super affordable, but the long and the short of it is your factory units are so much better than those Chinese. The metal's better, the fitment's better, the machining's better. All in all, it's just a better unit. So if you can, rebuild it. Now, what would keep you from rebuilding a factory caliper? Well, maybe you have something wrong with it, like a seized bleeder or a seized piston. All right, we're gonna go over the seized uh, bleeder real quick right now. Just get it nice and hot. You can do this on the vehicle or off the vehicle. This is just a propane plumbing torch, nothing special. You can get it hotter than a $2 pistol and then you're gonna quench it real quick. Best option here is really water, but if you have WD-40 or penetrating oil, you can absolutely use that as well. Just be aware that it is gonna make a whole lot of smoke that's not so good for you to breathe. Now this is a 10 millimeter bleeder. I'm hammering a nine millimeter 12 point on and working it back and forth. As Soon as I hit some resistance, I'm going all the way back to the beginning, coming back around again. The point here is to save the caliper. If we roll this off in there or gall up the threads, well, now is it really worth it to save this caliper? Probably not. But if you can work that guy out of there, mint. I could reuse that bleeder if I wanted to. I'm not going to though, because the new kit comes with a brandy new one, which we are gonna use. We're just gonna make sure to anti-seize the whole thing. Uh, usually, I would tell you, hey, go easy on the anti-seize, bud, but get as much, get it all over on this thing. Why not? Because uh, when a bleeder seizes or rolls off on you and, and breaks off in the caliper, oh boy, there's just about nothing worse. Now I'm working this guy down and spending a little extra time here because the only problem with this caliper was the bleeder and I wanna make sure that problem is resolved before I move on. I'm gonna be dealing with seized pistons in just a minute, but whatever your issue is, before you should move forward, make sure that your caliper is 10 out of 10. Now once you've done that, you can start disassembling. We're gonna break this caliper down to its most basic form. I'm doing that uh, by removing the slide hardware. In this case, it was seven millimeter hex. Yours might be, or seven, seven millimeter Allen. Yours might be hex or whatever have you. Uh, you're also gonna to wanna to remove any other hardware, anti-rattle clips, retaining clips. I have one side of this anti-rattle clip that's seized in there. Because I'm not reusing it, I'm gonna use the torch to get her nice and hot. If you're reusing uh, a spring clip, you can't get it cherry red because it won't be a spring clip anymore. You'll ruin the spring characteristics. I'm gonna get new ones with brake pads though, so I just wanted this guy out without damaging the hole uh, that it goes in on my factory caliper there. Uh, as you can see, pulling out the slide hardware. Again, these weren't terrible on this one. That's not why this one's getting rebuilt, uh, but on yours it may be. Pull out all the rubber. Even if it looks decent, it's got 20 some odd years on it. It's not as good as it used to, and the uh, new kit comes with them, so why wouldn't you? Now what I'm doing here is pulling out the banjo, making sure the bleeder's tight. I'm gonna do what I can to seal an air compressor fitting in that banjo hole and that'll allow me to eject this piston. Now that'll even work if your piston is seized in there. It might take a couple tries, but seal it up so you only have one orifice open, then seal an air compressor fitting in there and give her the business. And it'll pop your piston out even if it's seized. Then you gotta remove the dust boot here. A lot of these dust boots have a metal ring that kind of friction fits over. That's what you're looking at here. And then you get the orange Loctite in between them after 20 years of uh, mud and the blood and the beer down there. Uh, but work that guy off, pull out any seals that are on the inside. A lot of these have one or two square seals. Uh, once it's all completely broken down, you're gonna clean it up. Now you gotta hit two areas for sure. Any machined surfaces where new seals are gonna go like you were just seeing on the caliper there. And then the valleys on the bracket where the brake pads slide. Those two areas have to be cleaned. Now these little toothbrush sized wire brushes, you can get at the dollar store in a three pack. They're great, you can get them at Harbor Freight. They're great, they're cheap, they do a good job. But if you have the means, if you have a bench grinder by all means, spend some time over there. You're gonna see on the left here is the bench grinder about five minutes and on the right is the wire brush by hand for about five minutes. Both are serviceable, one is a little bit better. 
Now, on to the lubricants. I'm going to talk very little about this. After six years on YouTube, I've learned one thing, and that is that almost nothing is as divisive as brake lubricants. Um, friend Kate gave us some cherry flavor and some pina colada. I will tell you, I'll be using the cherry on almost everything. I'll be using the pina colada on the slides, and that's it. If you have a differing opinion, hey, bud, leave me a comment down in the squawk boxes. I've watched, uh, specifically watched Wes work, goes into a lot of detail, and for a while he was always talking about brake lube, and people would just give him the hardest time about it. I don't really care what your opinion is. This is how I do them, and it's been working for me. Once you got the seal in there, um, you're gonna have to think about your piston and your dust boot. If your dust boot indents into your piston, like most of them do, I highly recommend you install the boot on the piston first. It's not easier to install it on the caliper first. Get it in your piston. It's like an accordion bellows type seal. Then you're gonna seat your piston. Now this piston is gonna take a little force to initially get past that seal. Make sure both the piston and the seal are lubricated. Make sure you use something uh, like wood or plastic. If you use a uh, socket or just hammer right onto that piston, those are composite pistons. You'll break a corner off, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. Once it's sealed in there, you can work on getting that dust boot sealed around that machine surface. I like to start in the back, work it around to the front. You're gonna see it doesn't wanna stay by itself. Once you get it kind of worked around to the front, you can very carefully get a screwdriver on there and tap it down to really properly seat it. Uh, you wanna be careful, obviously, you're only getting the screwdriver on the metal ring. If you are careless, it will push right through that rubber seal and, and you're done, you gotta go get a new kit. Now once everything's seated, I like to put a piece of wood in the caliper and eject it with an air compressor, just like I did before. This is to make sure that I installed the piston and all the seals correctly. If the piston pops out and the seal is able to hold pressure, you know everything's right. Um, if not, maybe you have to go back to the drawing board. Uh, we mentioned before removing all the rubber. Um, you wanna make sure you lubricate it when you're putting it back in. This is to prevent rust jacking. I've actually seen rust jacking so bad on these parts that they will grab down on the caliper slides. Uh, the best way I found to put these in is put a needle nose through the hole, grab onto the seal, twist it around the needle nose, and then you can kind of pull it through. See what I'm doing? Um, you wanna be careful obviously not to rip it, but once it's through, you can rub off any uh, extra lubricant and then behind that cast iron boss there's going to be uh, some nice uh, grease in there to keep it from rusting and rust jacking and collecting a bunch of crap. Here's where I'm using some of the white grease. It's just how I'm doing it. I'm not even going to talk about it because it's such a divisive topic. If you want to discuss it in the comments, we can. Um, I like to put an excessive amount of lubricant on the slides because they're in a closed system. They have little caps that go on the back and the front is closed. So there's not a lot of opportunity for dust and dirt ingress. Um, so you want to have as much lube there as you can. Wipe off a little bit of the excess uh, to make sure that it's not going to make a mess or bleed onto our pads. And now we can install our bracket again different companies use different styles these are allen's on this jeep uh, a lot of japanese and german cars will use hex doesn't matter whatever yours are um, get them nice and snug uh, this friend kit kit came with uh, red loctite on the slides which is great so you don't have to worry about that and then you want to make sure you install these uh, caps on the back to uh, prevent dust and water ingress. Like I was just saying, these slides kind of exist in a closed system and that's very important for them. I am installing the rubber boot cover on the new bleeder screw. Forgot to do this before, but super important. It's gonna extend the life of that bleeder. And that's really one of the only things that takes a caliper out if it's well cared for. Now, paint, let's talk about paint. You can do as much or as little aesthetic work on calipers. You can clean them up all the way. You can spend an hour on each one and then hit them with this caliper paint sure it's it's fine there's not no reason not to do it um it adds you know a nice little accent to the car i'm not going to do it on these because this ain't that jeep this is a tow jeep plow jeep but on my subaru i put up a video which i'll link in the corner where i did some work uh prepping for paint if you want to see how to do that i'd recommend checking that video out who buddy buck i will tell you what that was fun to edit <laughs> with no sound thanks for joining me and making it to the end i'm coming to you on my brand new to me uh, gopro 9 i couldn't see spending 500 bucks on the 12. got this open box 9 from best buy for a song so you guys can let me know does the video and audio look better uh, but what i do know is definitely better than before is this here caliper i got it all loaded up with some car quest uh platinums they're gonna do just fine on here they're about 50 bucks for the pair uh make sure when you're putting your calipers on everybody knows this right your bleeders got to go on top man 
Oof, the bane of shade tree mechanics everywhere. Those darn bleeders. Uh, slip this guy on. Mine are, my uh, mountain hardware is plenty well anti-seize from before. Alrighty, friends. Once your mountain hardware is cranked down, you're going to want to reconnect that banjo. Make sure that you retain copper washers on both sides. They say not to reuse these, but I've really never had much of a problem, but it's probably worth keeping a couple in your glove box just in case you develop a leak or just go ahead and replace them. I mean, how expensive could they be, right? Uh, you should kind of feel that copper crush there. You'll get to a point and it'll yield a little bit more and you know you're good. Uh, and then what we're going to do is gravity bleed these for a while. So I'm just going to pop these bleeders open, put a little bucket under them, make sure the reservoir up front is topped off and uh, check back in about five minutes, see if there's fluid coming out of there. It's gonna save you a lot of pumping on the brakes. Well, it's gonna save the misses a lot of pumping on the brakes. Hey, give her five and hold it. Give her another five and hold it. Give her another five, you know, you been there, you know. Um, or you could break out the, uh, the self bleeding thing, but get the family involved. I'm serious, call the kids. Hey, we gotta bleed some brakes, kids. Put down the VR, stop talking to chat GPT. We're gonna, we're gonna deal with something in the real world for about 10 minutes. Uh, but I will do that off camera. The point of this video was obviously uh, to show you the how-to, show you some of the tips and tricks that were hard won on my part. Save yourself the aggravation, take it from me. Especially those ones with getting the seals, getting the piston out. If you have a seized piston, that air compressor trick is 10 out of 10 all day. Um, but moreover, I really wanted to show you that, hey, rebuilding calipers is A, a thing. It's B, attainable. Uh, C, it's affordable. Um, more affordable than just throwing, you know, some Chinesium power stops at it, which isn't a bad option, you know, if yours are really KO'd, but a lot of times you're gonna find I, your, your factory unit is a lot better, just across the board. The metal's better, the fitment's better, the everything's better. Um, and so rebuild them rather than replacing them with a reman that's probably gonna seize on you in two years. This one with factory parts lasted uh, 22 years, going on 23 years. Pretty good, man, I'll trust that, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, with some new parts. The friend kits, I absolutely love. I'm gonna leave you a uh, link down to the one that I used as well as where you can find some other ones. So far I've used ones for Jeep and I've used ones for Subaru and they've both been 10 out of 10. So leave me that comment down in the squawk boxes. Let me know, are you rebuilding your calipers or is that a bridge too far for you? If so, what vehicles are you doing it on? And again, love to know if you saw any difference in the camera. Thanks for sticking with me on this uh, not so usual style video with the voiceover, but thanks for being good sports about it. I do appreciate it. We'll be back with our regular scheduled programming after the first of the year. Thanks for watching. See you next time.